Hello, welcome to the next tutorial here in our series of videos, our uh, introduction to the IDF to PH toolkit. Uh, my name is Ed May with Building Type, and um, glad that you're uh, glad that you're watching. Um, in this video, what I'd like to do is continue on our our, our build of our our simple little model here. If you have been following along, um, you have a model that looks something like like the like the one here, where we have our our small Rhino model in the upper left corner of the scene here. We have our Grasshopper energy model and we have our PHPP model in the lower section here. And what I'd like to do now is finish off this model and get everything working by taking a look at a couple of last uh, a couple of last elements here. Um, mo most notably, uh, what I'd like to do is set up our cooling systems. So we'll take a look at the cooling energy consumption and the overheating performance, so the cooling performance of the building. And then we will look at how we set up the primary energy um, uh, portion of our building uh, configuration here. And we'll take a look at the, the final results uh, for, for the project. Um, so uh, we'll take a look at both of those. We'll probably split this up into a couple videos. Um, and uh, uh, um, yeah, let's uh, let's dive right in. So, uh, as I said, if you have been following along, you'll have a project that looks something like this. You've got a, a small box model here with our geometry, and um, in the last couple of videos, we added our systems. We started adding in the domestic hot water system, the fresh air ventilation system. Um, started building out all those components. Uh, hopefully, yours is working as well, and you're successfully streaming your model out to Energy Plus and then reading that energy plus back in, interpreting it, and then converting it into a successful PHPP um, Excel energy model. So as I said, the last couple pieces here we want to look at um, in order to finish off our project are the primary energy and the cooling. So let's first go to our PHPP and let's take a look at where we're at when it comes to cooling performance of our building. So I'll come down here and I'll just maximize the PHPP so that we can take a look at how we're doing. And so here I'm on the verification worksheet. Whoops, let me just make a couple of settings here. There we go. For some reason, just didn't have my certification classes set here. So these are set now. So um, this is our verification worksheet. Let me zoom in a little bit so that we can take a look at it a little bit better. Zoom in here. And you can see here on our sort of dashboard um, that we are getting a lot of good values. Um, we are getting some weird values for primary energy, and we are um, we're not seeing any cooling and dehumidification information, um, uh, uh, but we are seeing some pretty high uh, overheating frequency. Um, and so a couple of things are happening here in, in the model right now. So first of all, we haven't set any systems in our primary energy uh, worksheet. And so these results down here in the primary energy tab should basically be ignored. Um, we, we have not fleshed out the model yet in a way where these numbers would be useful or valid or, or complete. So don't don't take a look at these just yet. These are these are uh, not valid. But the one that we do want to focus on in this video, um, it, we'll come back to these in the next video, but the one that I'd like to focus on now is this frequency of overheating and talk about why we're not seeing any cooling or dehumidification values uh, here in the, in the upper portion. So let's start with the first question, the first, that, or that second question first. Um, that's an easy one to answer. Why are we not seeing any cooling or dehumidification or cooling load results here? And that's because, as you see up here in uh, a cell N29, we have cooling turned off in this project, or I should say we have mechanical cooling, uh, active cooling, air conditioning, turned off in this project. We are using a so-called passive cooling system in order to provide summertime comfort for our occupants. Now that's perfectly allowable in the passive house standard. There are many, um, in fact, if maybe, maybe one would say most, uh, passive house buildings use so-called passive cooling and is certainly a viable strategy in many climates. Uh, where I practice in New York City, um, that is not a viable strategy for all sorts of reasons. Um, and so we're always using mechanical cooling in a climate like New York, New York City, a you know, subtrop subtropical um, uh, climate. And, um, uh, and so for this project, I'd like to turn mechanical cooling on. And at that point, what we'll see is we'll start to actually see some, some results here. But before we do that, let's take a look at this frequency of overheating number and let's see if we can bring this number down a little bit. 
before we start adding active cooling into the mix. So let's see what we can do to bring this frequency of overheating number down a bit. Now the main thing that we're going to do to bring that down is increase our ventilation. So, so far we have not set any summertime ventilation uh, that is operable windows. Uh, we have, so far, the building here thinks that it's completely sealed up all summer long, and it's part of why we're seeing such high overheating uh, frequency here. Uh, so let's set our summer ventilation, um, uh, set our operable windows for the project, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, add mechanical cooling in the, in the next video. So let's start with our frequency of overheating, and let's start by looking at the summer vent worksheet. All right, so I'll come down here to my worksheets at the bottom, and I'll scroll across until I get to the summer vent, and let's go to the summer ventilation worksheet. So go to the summer ventilation worksheet. And what do we see on the summer ventilation worksheet? We see a couple of different things here. So first of all, we see our, let me zoom in a bit so that we can see this a little bit better. So first of all, we see the results for our passive cooling up here in this top panel. So we see that here's the frequency of overheating. So this is um, hours of the year. So 30%, one third of the hours of the year are above 25C, um, 77F uh, in, inside of our project here. And we also have very high uh, frequency of excess humidity as well. But as I said, uh, part of the problem here is that the building, if you take a look down here in the, um, uh, basic um, uh, air exchange section. The building is sealed up all summer long. We have we have no operable windows whatsoever in our project right now. So notice here that our window ventilation air change rate is zero, and we are not even uh, implementing any summer bypass on the HRV or ERV. This, of course, being our our basic um, or daytime uh, window window ventilation. And then if we scroll down a little bit we'll see that we have a, a nighttime cooling section. And notice here our window nighttime ventilation is also set to zero. Uh, so this, this whole building is sealed up all summer long. There's no operable uh, windows here. So obviously that would lead to um, quite a bit of overheating if that was really how you, how you did it. So we'll look at how we fill this section in using our IDF to pH components. So we definitely want to turn on some, some, um, some uh, uh, passive ventilation here and see how that affects our, over, our frequency of overheating. So let me minimize the Excel. And let me go back to our grasshopper. I'll sort of open this up a little bigger. We don't really need to work on the rhino side here. Um, uh, so we'll take a look at our grasshopper model. And hopefully your grasshopper model looks something similar. You're going to be creating your honeybee zones. You add some windows, calculate the shading factors, create the rooms and set all of our ventilation. We set the envelope air tightness. Uh, we build out the fresh air ventilation systems and the domestic hot water systems. Then we s export all of that information out to Energy Plus. Then we read that Energy Plus model back in and export it, stream it out to our PHPP. So hopefully your model looks something similar. And where we're going to set the manual ventilation for the project is going to be over here in this setup PHPP portion. So the place that we're going to actually turn on our, our uh, summer ventilation, our manual windows, um, is not actually over here on the windows themselves. But we're going to set it up in this setup PHPP section. So let me zoom in on this setup PHPP section. This is where we convert the uh, IDF to pH objects into, into valid PHPP objects, and we set up the various um, settings for the PHPP. So let me zo zoom in here, and we'll take a look at some of these, some of these objects. So if you remember way back when, in the earliest um, uh, videos, uh, we had a couple of things ha happening here. We were taking the PHPP objects from the IDF file, we were converting them into Excel writable objects. So remember that this component here, what this guy does is build Excel writable objects, meaning it has a worksheet, a cell range, and a value. And we just have, you know, a couple hundred of those at this point. So these all get written to Excel. Let's see how many we have. 308 values get written to Excel. And then this component down here allows us to do something similar. So we get a similar set of Excel writable objects move over, that have a worksheet, a cell range, and a value. But rather than being related to the 
uh, geometry of the building. These are sort of, um, I don't know, uh, uh, well, they're setup objects. So this is where you're going to set things like climate and um, summer ventilation. Um, and you can see here that there are inputs for simplified domestic hot water and air tightness values. So there are other ways to work with these components. You can enter simplified values here or simplified um, uh, components here. Um, we've shown the more detailed uh, setup in this video series, but there are other ways to work with these things that um, if you have, you know, really, really simple uh, projects, you can sort of um, streamline the, the data entry a little bit. In any event, we're not going to worry about too much of these. The one that I want to take a look at here is this summer ventilation input. So the summer ventilation input. And the summer ventilation input takes a couple of different types of values. So let me just rearrange our, our scene here a little bit, give us a little bit of room. Let me crunch this a little bit so that we can see our PHPP. Um, and we'll take a look at the PHPP here. Let me zoom out a bit so we can see a bit more of this worksheet as we go. So this is my summer ventilation worksheet. And the easiest way to work with this summer vent input is just to set it to true. So if we just set it to true, in that case, a default summer ventilation setup will be added to the scene. So let me delete this out and let me add a, a Boolean toggle to the scene. And I'll hook that up to my summer vent. And as soon as I set that to true, notice that we get a bunch of build out here, a bunch of um, options get set. And if we scroll down a little bit, we take a look at our nighttime ventilation, our nighttime ventilation was also set. So let's, uh, first of all, before we look at these specific values, let's see what that did to our overheating. So that knocked our overheating down by a third. So we went from 30% to 20% um, overheating. Now, 20% is still way too high. Um, you, that number should be more like 2% at the most. Um, uh, but um, uh, that certainly did help. So adding that ventilation, so adding both some summer bypass and some additional window ventilation did help a lot. Now, where did the specific numbers come from, though? Where did 0.17 come from? Well, if you look at the formula here, 0.17 is actually referencing the basic ventilation, so the HRV or ERV system, and it's just adding 50%, or it's just multiplying it by 50%. Now, these two values get added together to give you a total summer ventilation flow rate. And the recommendation, as you see in the tooltip here, is that um, the PHI recommendation is that your summer uh, air change rate should be about 50% higher than your winter air change rate. So 0.33 is our winter air change rate. So we add 50% to that. That gives us you know, uh, a total of, what is that, 0.5. Right? 0.33 plus 0.17 um, would give us a 0.5 air change altogether. Now, we can go higher than that. We can override this value if we want. So the other way to work with this input is rather than input true, we can actually input a number. So rather than 0.17, let's say I want to use 0.43. Where did I get 0.3 from? I don't know. Just made it up. I'll show in a minute. We can calculate that. But So say you use 0.43. Notice 0.43 now, um, now flows through. So instead of putting true, we can actually pass in a number. And if we, whoops, if we pass in a number, in that case, that will be applied to both the, wind, the uh, daytime and the nighttime ventilation. So 0.43, quite a bit higher than 0.17. So let's see what that did to our overheating. I'll scroll up here a little bit. Notice our overheating is now down to 15% of the year. Well, okay, so can we do a little bit of that? Maybe that's my daytime flow rate, but maybe at night I actually want to open things up even more so. Well, in that case, I can enter two values. So I'll change this to multi-line input, and I'll input a second value. Whoops for a nighttime ventilation. And if I input two values, the first value is used for my daytime ventilation, and I'll scroll down a bit, and the second value, 0 0.8, is used for my nighttime wi uh, window ventilation. And let's see what that did to our frequency of overheating. So it helped a little bit. That brought us down to 13%. Right, so you can work with this component in several different ways. You can either uh, use just a, you know, just enter true, um, or, you know, any, yeah, enter true, and that'll set up a, a default summer ventilation system for you. Or you can enter specific values um, uh, for the daytime and nighttime uh, air exchange.
Now, where do those numbers come from, 0.3 and 0.8? Well, PHI has included, let me open this up a bit, has included a simplified calculator over here, if you like, for calculating the air exchange through windows. So you can certainly use this um, uh, table here, if you like, to, to build those out. And then there are other tools, obviously, you have Ladybug and Honeybee here, um, which are capable of, of um, along with some of their other tools, uh, capable of doing, you know, um, um, CFD analysis for, for Windows, um, that's usually a lot more than we would need for, for a, a normal project. But, you know, there are other ways that you could evaluate that and calculate these calculate these numbers uh, uh, for sure. So there's simplified numerical calculators like the one here in the PHPP. There are really sophisticated simulation tools like um, uh, the Honey Honeybee and Ladybug tools, and there's a whole range of other tools as well. So you, you can input these numbers from any number of, of, of sources, but in the end, the important thing is that they become or they get translated into a daytime and nighttime window air change rate. So those those are going to get applied here. Now, unfortunately, let's go back to our verification worksheet. Open up our PHPP a bit. Unfortunately, whoops. Unfortunately, 13% is far too high for a frequency of overheating. That's far too high. Um, uh, yeah, for, for, for any project that we would want to be working on. Um, the certification limit is 10%, but that's also way too high. Um, that number should be more like 1% to 2% of the year um, uh, for sure. So what that means for us in this project is that um, uh, unless we were to change something radical, radically about the project, uh, orientation or climate or something, um, we're going to have to implement mechanical cooling. So mechanical cooling is going to be necessary, and we'll see in the next video how we turn on mechanical cooling, and then just the last bits of setup that we need to do in order to implement mechanical cooling in our project. We want to um, build out a simple mechanical system, and that'll also um, allow us to, to touch on the uh, primary energy worksheets as well. So we'll come back in the next video and we'll, we'll finish off and we'll, we'll, we'll build that out and, and we'll um, see some total uh, uh, final values for our project here. So I'll see you in the next video and we'll, we'll finish off our, our little project here.